Welcome ladies and gents. I thought we'd all take a deep look at Hollywood versus history. There's going to be a movie called The Woman King being released and it preys on stupidity. Not only does it prey on stupidity, it is highly hilarious because there's a certain hypocritical nature to The Woman King because it depicts the Dahomey Kingdom as anti-slavers. Uh, they were in fact influential in the Atlantic slave trade and they had slaves of their own. They sold slaves and they were slavers. So there's something somewhat sadistically sinister about Hollywood depicting, and also Viola Davis is a dumbass, uh, depicting this Amazonian Dahomey Kingdom agoji, you know, as anti-slavers uh, and saying it's based on a true story whilst also blindly leaving out the gigantic element that they were slavers themselves uh, and it's just utterly hilarious i tweeted this out so if you don't follow me on twitter you should because it's very very funny but the reason why uh, i wanted to do this is because of course the woman king uh, is now you know doing the rounds loads of people are praising it because again it preys on the stupidity of certain, not everyone, but certain Americans that don't know their history. So, uh, yeah, again, they're praising it because they don't understand the history. But let's take a look, right? Gina Prince Bythewood's period film, The Woman King, opens with an incredible action, action sequence about General Naniska, uh, an entirely fictional character, actually, of the Agoji army approaching a village of men holding their women hostage. Now, the Agoji army were pretty influential in wars, well, battles, I guess you could say, because they went out and got slaves for their kingdom, the Dahomey kingdom. Uh, but this is the uncomfortable truth of this film, and I think this film will bomb as a result, hopefully. Men are getting sliced, diced, and tossed around the screen by these mighty warrior women. After they arrive back in the Dahomey kingdom, Victorious, the story introduces Nawi. Now, the, again, this is kind of all nonsense, right? Who cares about half this stuff? Um, but the main point I wanted to get to, right, is when they're like, you know, life is thriving for the Dahomey. I mean, it was thriving primarily because they were slavers and they were selling slaves. So that's primarily why it was thriving. But there is an impending sense of dread that war against the slave selling general of the Oyo Empire might be on the horizon. What? You were slavers. You were slavers yourself. What are you on about? So is the regiment of female fighters in the movie based on an actual group of female Dahomey warriors? Yes, there was an all-female military regiment. But they weren't superheroes like Viola Davis uh, is pondering around on in the interview saying. Yep, so the Agoji, or Mino, our mothers... They were referred to as the Dahomey Amazons by Western Europeans who wrote about them. An obvious nod to the fierce female warriors in Greek mythology. The Agoji existed for much of the Kingdom of Dahomey's existence. So that's obviously from 16, uh, 1600 to 1904. Forming either sometime during King... I'm not even going to try and say that. Uh, or in the early 1700s. French slaver Jean-Pierre uh, Thibault observed them at the Dahomey port of Ouda something like that, in 1725. They made their first appearance in written history in 1729. One theory is that the creation of an all-female military regiment became necessary due to the high number of casualties the kingdom was suffering in conflicts with neighbouring West African states. Uh, and in the least, this seems to explain the Agoji's expansion under King Gezo, uh, portrayed by John Boyega. So this is important. This is a real person, right? From the hundreds of thousands. Another theory suggests that the Agoji's origins can be traced to the homies skilled female hunters who operated in teams uh, known as Beto. Later, the Gebeto evolved into the Dahomey Amazonians uh, and after they were initially recruited for a palace guard in the early 1700s, possibly under the reign of Queen Hangbi. Uh, this makes some sense given that the men were forbidden from being in the palace precincts while Dahomey women were not. So here they are, group of the uh, ag 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 Agoji, sorry. So this character is completely fictional, completely fictional. Um, but here's the interesting element, right? So while conducting the Woman King fact check, we learned that Viola Davis's character was significantly fictionalized when compared to the real-life female generals of the Dahomey. For example, 
General Sei Dong Hong Bei, depicted in the image below, so here it is, um, com commanded the Agoji during the during the the least part of the reign of King Gezo. So again, real real character. Uh, in 1851, Sei Dong Hong Bei led an army of 6,000 Dahomey female warriors against the Egba Fortress of Ag Buketu in order to obtain slaves for the Dahomey slave trade. The battle took its toll on the Ogoji. Oh no, a bunch of slavers. Their swords, appear, uh, spears and bows were largely ineffective against Egba's European cannons. Only about 1,200 Ogoji warriors survived the lengthy battle. Well, good. Fuck them. Bunch of slavers. Her actions <laughs> contradict the anti-slavery stance of Naniska in the movie. I mean, this is just Hollywood rewriting history and people being so dumb that they don't understand it. N not least of all the actors, because they don't do any research. Um, did the kingdom of Dahomey participate in slavery and slave trading? Uh, yes. <laughs> the Dahomey are much more the villains than the heroes. The kingdom of Dahomey was a bloodthirsty society bent on conquest. It was customary for the Dahomey to return home with the rotting heads and genitals of those they killed in battle. They conquered neighbouring African states and took their citizens as slaves, selling many in the Atlantic slave trade in exchange for items like rifle... Again, the Atlantic slave trade. So, this is made by stupid, dumb... Not dumb, they're actually very smart. This is made by, generally speaking, a bunch of white directors. White... I'd say directors, probably... It's made by a bunch of white people selling it to African Americans who don't do any research that are going to praise this because of hashtag BLM. Do you see the weird, sadistic, sinister nature to it? Because not only are some of their ancestors probably the result of the Dahomey, they're now being sold this fun sort of historical change as fact on the reliance that these people won't do any research. Wow. Wow. Hollywood's really fucked up. When you look at this, it's absolute... I mean, it's really quite tragic. So, they conquered neighbor. So, it's Atlantic slave trading example for rifles, tobaccos, and alcohol. Many of the slaves they sold ended up in America. So, ladies and gents, they're all hashtag BLM, that are loving this and like, yeah, black stories, black Amazon women... Uh, especially Viola Davis is literally saying they're superheroes. No, they're not. They're slavers. And they're probably the reason why you're actually in America. And why you hate your country. They also kept some slaves themselves to work on royal plantations. The business of slavery is what brought Dahomey most of its wealth. For them, it very much came down to either enslave others or become enslaved yourself. Uh, so the Agoji fought in slave raids along with male fighters. Uh, I, don't really, I don't really want to get into anything else. But anyway... For each year in each year in Dahomey, roughly 500 slaves and criminals were mass execute, executed in large-scale human sacrifices during the religious ceremonies of a, of a festival known as Annual Customs of Dahomey. Just absolute barbarians. Absolute barbarians. So this was a real Dahomean king. Again, another uh, pleb, I guess. John Boyega, who... Does hashtag BLM yet stars and something, which... I mean, you're representing a king that was a slaver. You absolute bumhole. But, you know, why not, I guess. I just thought you'd find this funny. I did. So, when they tried to... I mean, I'm, I'm going to love watching this film at all of the uh, sort of blinkered moments where they just try and hide away from the real events and how they try and rewrite it. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. So, anyway... Anyone being sold this as historical fact, goodness gracious, you now know a little bit more of the truth.